And we're back for game number three. Yep, game number three. Let's jump right in. <clears throat> oh, the wait time is longer than usual. I wonder if uh, there are not that many people doing the event anymore in the last day. There we go. Mm, this hand is acceptable. Turn two removal, turn three removal or mass removal, and a turn four play. This is okay. This is pretty decently set up against aggro decks, but going second and having all depleted lands means that I can't play this in the turn four. Not the greatest. Um, hoping to draw something good here. Let's start with the Zenon banner. The idea is if I draw a Sigil, then this can go into play a uh, non-depleted, which I think is, is gonna be very good if I if I manage that. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Tranquil Scholar. Is he also gonna be using Hero of the People? That's possible. Uh, I haven't played against too many decks that are in these three color combinations. That is not control. Oh, there you go. That's definitely a, uh, a hero of the people deck. But splashing blue. I wonder what blue gives him. Hmm. I'm not sure I care about using Varus Favor on this. I don't want to play the Piercing Grief because I would like to play on the same turn as the Hero. That means on this turn, I can either play this or this. Um, or do... I, I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the, the Varus Favor here. Because this guarantees... Oh crap, I have to discard. That's painful. Um, I don't know what... I think Plague may be the worst card here. Uh, the, because the reason I did that is because now, um, on the next turn, I guarantee a undepleted Seed of Vengeance, which I can then use to play the Stone Powder Alchemist. Whereas if I didn't do that, there's a chance that I can't play a 4 mana spell next turn. Um, in which case, the only option I have is to either play the Hero, which I don't want to play, or the Banish, which I don't want to play on this either, because this is a pretty poor unit. So whatever he has in his hand has now got <laughs> Quick Draw again. That's pretty unlucky of him. Um, so I can take a look at his hand. Um, but if I do that, then I, my only other 3 drop is to play Banish. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8. I have 10 cards. So if I play the Stone Powder Alchemist, I don't have to discard. But I can't block either of his units, which is actually somewhat annoying. I'm actually very interested to see what he has in his hand, so let's just start with that. Because I don't know what to expect. I've never played against this deck before. I think the information would be useful. So I don't really care about either of these cards. All of my units are very resilient to, uh, against the Slay. But I also don't really care about him drawing units, drawing cards, because he's drawing so many cards anyway. Um, I guess I'll take the Slay. And then I can use Slay or I can use Banish. Banish lets me hit a Relic, but I don't know what Relic he would be playing. I'm just going to go ahead and, and use the Banish. The Slay is a little bit more versatile, uh, not versatile, but um, better as a removal spell because I can use it to kill maybe a Mactal, whereas the Banish cannot. That's fine. Try to Banish for his Devour. So there's the hero, and then he's Haunting Scream, the Piercing Grief. Ah, so he just drew the Haunting Scream. Oh, so that's what the blue is for, is the Haunting Scream. Haunting Scream is pretty interesting, uh, but it doesn't work with Destiny. Like, Haunting Scream puts the Piercing Grief directly into play, so you don't get the Destiny trigger, and you don't get to draw a card off of it, which I think is kind of a 
a lackluster interaction. But I am down to five. <laughs> this is pretty tricky. Um, I can kill it, but then my only other play is to slay this, and then I die to any kind of a... Actually, I die if he simply revent, uh, destinies this. But if I do hero plus piercing grief, I can attack him for seven, going to thir 12, and then he hits me back for eight, going to four. Um, what's better? I think... It's my only option at this point is to do this and hope that he doesn't have a, a way to do four more damage to me because if he plays one more piercing grief he can do three more uh, that brings me to one. Oh well that kills me because that does well wow. very aggressive um, and I'm I guess I'm a little too slow the first two or three turns, taking way too much damage uh, off of these two twos. So, all right, uh, that's my loss. So I'm at two one, unfortunately. Well, that game was instant. All right, no wait. Uh, that's no good. This hand's not great either, but at least two removal spells against a Stone Scar deck seems pretty good. So why don't I start with a Sabotage, just to be efficient with my mana, assuming that I'm going to have to use a removal spell in turn two. Oh, it's Dark Return, so it's not an aggressive deck. Hmm. So I'm expecting a third color. Yep, there we go. Ah, I see. Kind of like a Zen and Killers type deck. Um, I don't... How much do I care about this unit? I don't actually care about this unit, unit at all. Um, so I'm not going to kill it. Yeah, I'm just going to... Ignore it and save my suffocate. I hope I don't regret that decision later. <laughs> no, that's one damage a turn is kind of irrelevant. Um, against these colors, and I'm wondering if I need to save Tavares' favor. But then again, I have tons of power, so there's no real reason to use it. Okay, that I would definitely suffocate next turn. Sandstorm Titan, maybe? Yep, there it is. So I have no way to kill the Titan. Well, I, I guess I can. If I wait one more turn, I can harsh will wait everything. But I don't think I need to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and kill these units one at a time. Because presumably he's going to have more things to play. And I can still harsh rule and get a 2 for 1 or a 3 for 1. No point taking... 8 extra damage. wonder what the red is doing for him. So far he's played no red cards except for Quarry. Or maybe um, Medusa, the Maiden. So no point playing Piercing Grief. Because he plays Dark Return, I feel like he cares a lot about his yard. So let's just go ahead and play the Steward of the Past. Get rid of any shenanigans. Yep, the steward can block that very easily. Mm, so I block, he torches it. It's still two for one. That's a fine trade. Oh, that's much worse for me. Because then it's a free kill. Um, so... I am going to kill this, so I need 2 mana for that no matter what. That means I can't play the Pathfinder no matter what. So let's just start with a Sabotage and see what's there. That's kind of irrelevant. Um, play a land. And then the question is, 
Maybe I just harsh rule this away and not take that one damage per turn. This is still a two for one. Was having the the death the deadly unit in play will eventually become relevant when I start attacking him. So let's just go ahead and harsh rule. So he only has one spell in his hand, and he had two, four, six cards. So they're basically all units. So he just drew that. That's unfortunate. All right, still got no business going on. Um, if I use Vanquish, I can also play the Pathfinder, which is exactly what I'll do. So I haven't drawn any revenge units at all. I've drawn only basically three units. So I'm really hoping that this Pathfinder hits something good, like Hero of the People or Magdos. I'm not sure if this deck can actually ever beat a Echo Revenge Macto. Just looks like it's got big creatures at the moment. Um, but I I guess the Red Splash is for Heart of the Vault, so maybe I don't have to worry about a Maiden. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. So yeah, now he's in trouble because he has no silencing effects except for Purify, which I don't think he'll play. So he's going to have a real tough time dealing with Macto here. Yeah, because this becomes 2, 2 becomes 4, and if he has no silencing effect, or if he doesn't have a steward, then I don't think he can win this game. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, from what I can see from my opponent's deck at the moment, based on the cards that he's played, it feels like his deck is too fair. I feel like in this event, there are far too many people doing unfair things that just goes way over top of you. Um, so these kind of fair... De oh, oh, he does have it. Oh, that's too bad. I hope he doesn't have it for this... Oh, wow, he also has the steward. Okay, so my opponent knows what he's doing. He knows his weakness, and he's got all the answers for it. Good for him. So I have to kill this no matter what. That's not an option. Um, so... I guess, I hope he doesn't have another Purify, but nobody plays just one Purify in their deck, right? So he must have more than one copy. So the chance of this surviving, not super high. He also has the Maiden, holy cow. Okay, my opponent is super prepared for the unfair decks. This deck is very good. My opponent, if he has four stewards, four Maidens, and four Purifies, I don't think I can ever beat him. My opponent is super, super well set up. Uh, I have 10 mana. I can do both of these things, but I can't... I don't really want to play them because I, I need a way to kill the Medusa first. That's rough. Um, I'm not going to play the Peace and Grief once again. I, until I kill the, uh, the Maiden, I don't want to play either of my Revenge units. That leaves me with all the other three cards. So let's just start with the Sabotage and see what I can find. Oh, he has a Torch. Now he has none. I'm at seven, I can block one unit and I get hit for eight. So I'm dead here, right? Pathfinder. Varus Favor. Yeah, so I need to draw a harsh rule or I'm toast. Oh, actually, no, no, no. As long as I can kill the Maiden and block a couple turns, maybe Amacta will come back for me. Oh, jeez. I feel like that... Oh no, he kills me this turn, so that is not a mistake. Yeah, he, he, he did, this actually kills me. Oh, that's a brutal trade. My echoing... Oh, maybe I should have played the non-echoing version first. And then, oh, that's a mistake on my part. I should have played this one instead of that one, because that one's more important. Why put it into play when his maiden's still in play? That's a huge mistake that I just made. Um, yeah, that was my bad. Because otherwise, I trade this version of Macdos for his maiden, and I would still have the echoing one, which 
I mean, I don't know what difference it makes at this point, because I'm at one life, but... But maybe it'll make a difference? Okay, so this blocks very well. Actually, this blocks extremely well. So, I have 11. I can do these two and that one. Yeah, that seems good to me. Oh, wait a minute, that does not work. Crap, because... <laughs> I only have- this thing dies, so I only have two blockers. Um, so I go to four, I block these two, and he does five damage to me. Okay, so I'm actually dead on board, so let's not waste any more of his time. So my opponent's deck is... Taking a whole 180 in the last four or five turns where he show where he showed his hand and he's all these tricks up his sleeve I guess um so that's a very good deck um I think that deck is extremely well set up against all the gimmicky decks um and basically hard counters my deck with so many silencing effects and void uh and void a counter void effects that's a fair loss. Um, favor, turn three play. Yep, yeah, I'll keep this hand. So it looks like our run on this event will be pretty short. Or 2-2. Two, two. Um, maybe if we're lucky, we can squeeze in another one or two wins, but not super optimistic about that either. Made a mistake, I should have played the banner. Because if I absolutely have to, I can play the um, seat next turn and get access to all three colors of mana. As it is right now, I don't get to get access to all three. Uh, uh, unless I play the... Uh, and even if I play the Shadow Sigil, I still don't get access to all three. So that I played the wrong land there. Small mistake, but in some games, those kind of mistakes can cost you. Uh, I have too many cards. Two, four, six, eight, ten cards up to discard. <laughs> Even if I use this, I still have to discard. Um, I guess I will use it and discard the land because I want to keep everything else at the moment. No, looking at these colors, it's looking like the plague won't be very good. So I'm just going to discard the plague. Who knows, Vera's Favor might do something with that one damage. Oh, is he playing the same deck I'm playing? Huh. We'll find out. Let's play Steward. I might not have run this out there unless I, uh, if I if I didn't have two copies, because I think he has a way to kill it. Um, I think maybe it would be better to play the Steward on the same turn that I can kill his Revenge unit. But because I have two copies, maybe less relevant. Because if I don't play the Steward, then my only other option was to play a removal spell, which is also not great. <laughs> Our deck is looking really similar. Um, I think I offer him the trade. Because I want to play the uh, the Elysian Pathfinder, so I'm not going to waste my time using a removal spell on his, on, on his steward. Yep, he is playing the same deck. And he must be playing the Pathfinder as well, because otherwise, why would you have time, right? Uh, so he's got a better draw than I do. Uh, let's just... No, this is a chump block. If I hold this back, I can keep the 2-2 the two -two back forever. So I think it's fine. Just take 7. Because whereas if I blocked here and, and lose my Pathfinder, this guy can start attacking. So it's not that great. 
No, I don't really care about this unit getting Echo. That's too bad. So I think the best play here is to actually kill this hero before it gets out of hand. And then I'll go ahead and attack him for three. I bet he is really, he's really sad that this happened. Because I would be in his shoes. This is an interesting game. I think this mirror is pretty interesting. I've never played the mirror before. I have a pretty good hand. That's too bad. I only have... I don't remember how many copies I run. I think I only ran three copies, so I only have one left. That could become problematic. Come on, give me something good. Uh, so I have access to six power or five power. I do feel like I should kill the hero. And then because I can kill it with the various favors, that seems like pure value. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, now the question is, what do I do with the leftover mana? I kind of want to play the Pathfinder. But I have to discard, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. No, I don't have to discard. But playing both of the Piercing Grief seems pretty sweet, because when I get back, they both echo. So let's just go for that. Mm. Yeah. Another reason why I want to get these things into the yard now is because I'm kind of worried that he draws a steward, uh, and then I wouldn't be able to take advantage of my uh, piercing griefs. I mean, I, I know that I have removal spells that I can play removal and then the piercing griefs, but I think this is fine. Oh, he's got the Zen and Occultist too. This is like the um, the earliest version of this deck that I'm running. Uh, I did a deck tech on this uh, in a different video, and. He his deck is looking like an exact copy of my deck, actually. I wonder... I wonder if he actually read my... I wonder if this guy actually watched my video and just decided to copy my deck. That would make me really happy. Oh, this is perfect. But I don't have those piercing griefs anymore. That part, not so perfect. Um... Oh wait, these things don't have echo, I just drew two of them. That's not perfect. <laughs> so what do I do here? Um, I think I will start with the Pathfinder no matter what. Um, I don't want to run the hero out there without also having something else to play. Um, the thing is, if I play the hero, I could very well draw into the Piercing Griefs, which will be great. But if I don't play the hero, what else am I doing? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and slay this unit, I think. Yeah, if I play the hero and he doesn't kill it, then and, and I draw into a piercing grief, then it's great for me. But I have a feeling he will be able to kill it, so. Okay. Oh, ouch. 5-3. Uh, uh, I'll chump block here. Um, I, I, th I think... Wait. Block here, lose it. Uh, no, I'll just take 5. Oh, this dies and it comes back as a 4-4, four, four, which is kind of annoying. Okay, well, in that case, I changed my mind. I'm just going to chump this, and then the intention is that I will harsh rule next turn. Because I'm going to have to remove uh, his Ascendant anyway with a Vanquish, but using a harsh rule seems fine. Oh, so, it would have been pretty good if I played the hero. But I do feel like he has removal spells that he would be able to kill it with. Oh, nice. Um, okay, so let's just do this. Uh, let's just attack him with everything, because I am going to Harsh Rule. He should know this deck. He should know I don't have any combat tricks, so he shouldn't be worried about that. Uh, then I, let's kill all the units. And then... I'm going to run one of the heroes out there. <laughs> I mean, it, it'll probably just bait out one of his removal spells. Yep. 
<laughs> he killed my hero the exact same way I killed his hero. This is totally... Um, in the earliest version of my deck, I do have a couple of copies of Mystic Ascendance. This is actually looking more and more like my original list. No, I even drew this back. It would have been perfect if the hero was in play. Ooh, Grinva, Judge of Battles. I, I tried this tech in the past as well, and I love it. I think it's a sweet tech. Uh, hey, I'm slowly coming back. I have now more life than he does. Let's sabotage him. Yeah, that's not relevant. I took the uh, Devourers out of this deck for the event, because in the event, I don't think drawing cards is important, so I took it out. But I think in Ranked, if you want to use this deck, then the Devourers are good. <laughs> I, I think the person who is able to assemble the Echoing Hero is going to win this game. Oh, let's get the hero killed. And then I can play the Pathfinder. Who do I want to kill the most? I think I want to kill the Zenin Cultist, to be honest with you. Because this thing is the one that's going to grow all his units. And it's kind of problematic. Let's just get rid of it. Um, let's just play this and give it charge. And then... Swing in. This is a... Uh, that just dies for no reason, so let's just not feed that. Let's not feed that. Oh no, it doesn't have Echo. Let's just feed it to him. I don't mind if any of these units die. Yep, he has pretty good blocks. He kills two of my units for free. And then he chumps one. Yeah, fair enough. So because the hero didn't die, I'm not super incentivized to play the Pathfinder. So let's just go ahead and play the other... Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about his 4-4 four, four power alchemist. It's not important enough. Uh, I'm going to save my removal spells for the Mystic Ascendants. He has not drawn any of the his copies of Magdals, and I have not drawn any of my copies of Magdals, which is kind of interesting. Um, now I have an additional removal spell. I think I have... I'm still not going to play the Pathfinder because I, I really do want to try and hit the hero with it. So let's just offer the hero to him for free. I mean, he can use these two units to block it and it would trade. I think that's fine. So I'm really hoping the hero is on top and he gets Echo, in which case I think I win. Ah, interesting game. Um, and I'm not worried about... Well... The argument for killing it now is if he draws Macdos, this becomes a 5-5 five, five flyer. Um, and when and I, I can kill it, but it'll come back as a 5-5 five, five flyer. But if I kill it now, it'll come back as a 3-3. Three, three. So maybe it's worth it. This is going to be a very long, drawn-out game. And sorry for the... The long video, guys. I have a feeling this will go on for another 5, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, that you, that card is irrelevant at this point. Um, This one has Echo? Yeah, I'll trade the one with Echo. And that, I'll just let it hit me, I don't care. Yeah, his, his doesn't have Echo, mine does, so mine's way better. There you go, if I had left the hero alive, the hero would be 5-5 five, five flying. Um, so I think, oh, this is a fantastic unit to get Echo on. It's not the hero, that's too bad, but this is even better, right? Yeah, this is this is amazing. And, and, and I even have an extra copy in my hand in case this one dies. Now I am, now I am crushing him. I'm not going to play the second copy, of course, because that deck most likely has harsh rules in it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I think I'm not going to slay his hero. I think I would rather keep the slay around for his um, next Mac, though. Wow, he's going off. I hope that happens to me next turn, because I have 
two units on top of my library, I think, that both has Echo. Not on top of my library, but like the top 10 cards. You know what I mean. Yeah, you can come in. I will block. Sure. This is a great trade. So I have another copy in my hand. And even if he, no matter what happens, I think this is a trade. And he loses his hero. The, the hero had revenge refreshed, so killing it is just a great deal. Yep, that's uh, also a great deal for me. Because his units are all silenced. So, oh yes! Oh yes! Come on, more! Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh yes! Oh perfect, perfect! <laughs> oh god, this is so much fun! Uh, let's start with the sabotage. Oh, this is this is great. I don't think... How many more Pathfinders do I have? One more. I think it's going to be very difficult to give Hero the uh, Echo. Yes! That was sweet. I'm definitely going to try and make a highlight reel out of that turn. That was so much fun. And yeah, this is this is the reason why I love this event. Um, You're kind of playing a gimmicky deck, and then your opponents are playing gimmicky decks, and... And when that happens, it's just so much fun. Uh, I love it. Um, this, this video is getting a little long. I'm going to stop this video and record the other videos separately. Thanks for watching.